Most things come in pairs, or fours, or even singles, but not threes. Threes just weird, it's, it's rare, but not impossible. My Hyundai Veloster Turbo has three doors, there's a band called Three Doors Down, and third time is definitely the charm, so let's try this out with a modern CPU. This is part three of four where we fittingly simulate a triple core gaming experience, because, oh, why not? I went over this in part one, but I'm gonna do it again because reinforcement. So click advance down at the bottom right, and then uh, click advanced again. Then you're gonna see CPU configuration. Can you kind of see that? It's a little overexposed, let me fix that. There we go. CPU configuration, let's click that, and then scroll down a ways. Now you see here, hyper-threading and active processor cores. So for this scenario here, we're gonna disable hyper-threading, and then we're gonna enable only three cores. So we're gonna have three physical cores running, but no hyper-threading. Hop up here to the top, click exit, click save changes and reset. Double check that the settings you've changed are correct here in this final little notification and then click OK. You can check and make sure everything's cool by opening up something like hardware monitor and scrolling down to utilizations here. It's gonna show you the CPU, basically all your threads. And right now we're seeing CPU zero, CPU two and CPU four. One, three and five are the respective hyper threads because we have hyper threading disabled. All you're seeing here is zero, two and four indicating three physical cores working right now. So something I haven't done the last two parts, but that I will do starting now, well I guess for the last two, uh, is show CPU usages while we're running the benchmark. So that's really not focusing, the sunlight is like just blasting the screen. Okay, so everything's exactly the same. I know that because, well, one way I can tell is just by looking at the memory usage, it's exactly the same. So uh, yeah, here we go, no advanced graphics. Oops, forgot to start fraps. Okay, now we're gonna start the benchmark. Okay, so this is definitely good stuff. I'm not really surprised because it ran perfectly fine on two cores. I have several videos covering uh, Pentiums and i3s running GTA 5. So uh, running on three cores really shouldn't change much. It's just odd to have a three core processor doing this work because you really don't see many three core processors being sold anymore. You can see as we're benchmarking the game, CPU usage is, well, it's fairly high. It's higher than it normally is. Look at that, 100%. We are maxed out right now, zooming in. It's been pegged at 100% this entire time. We are definitely CPU bound in this scenario. Okay, so now we're gonna benchmark City Skylines. Pay special attention to the Fraps counter up here in the top left corner. Check this out folks, a scene like that, boom, 100% CPU usage. Well, it was a second ago, but yeah, check it out. I mean, at least two or three of our CPUs are over 95%. Right now they are too. And look, a scene like this, you're looking at this saying, wow, this must be super intensive. That's not really an intensive scene right there, you know? So in some cases you will run into severe CPU bottlenecks in games like these, especially where there's a lot of stuff going on. The CPU plays it like this right here. CPU plays a huge role in scenes like this and boom, that's why it's at 100% across the board. But here's the cool thing. Despite having only three cores, we obviously were CPU bound according to MSI Afterburner, we still achieved very respectable frame rates. These are actually comparable to just a full on i7-6700K with all four cores and hyper-threading activated. Hey, on a side note, this stuff came in the mail. I have no idea what's in either of these boxes, so let's go ahead and open these up. <laughs> oh, really? Ooh, that looks high tech. This has nothing to do with the video at hand, but I really wanna see, what's, see what this is. Some advanced audio weaponry right here. Look at this, it even comes with its own amplifier. Yep, review of this coming very soon, folks, from Psycho. That's a pretty cool name, too, if I do say so myself. Again, advanced audio weaponry. When someone's got the bollocks to put that on the cover of their box, yeah, worthy of a science studio review, that is for sure. Just so everyone knows, this is like impossible to do with one hand. Where's my Where's my cameraman? Obviously some sensitive material all up in here, let's see. Ooh, an A-Pacer Arma, 60 gigabit per second, six gigabyte per second, excuse me, that's a gigabyte, that's a capital B. Solid state drive, 240 gig, all right. I smell a PC build in the very near future. What else do we have in here? Some Blade DDR4, 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz. Oh yeah, this is a heavy box. What are they, like, how heavy are dims? Like this is getting really out of hand. Oh wait, there's something else in here? No way. 
Oh, they got me a t-shirt. Oh yeah, we gotta open this up. That is a very tasteful graphic if I do say so myself. Look at that. Ooh, I can already say, wow, frame rate has gone way up since the one core hyper-threaded video. Well folks, I can say without a doubt this one will run well over your monitor's refresh rate. We're looking at around 200 FPS just, you know, at a first glance here. Nice and smooth this time, no frame stuttering, no skipping, no artifacts. Just good old gameplay. Yep, you could definitely play this game with three cores, no problem. Even though it is CPU intensive, yeah, very pleasant. Very smooth overall. Look at that. Look at the consistency in them. Let me zoom in real quick. I know you guys can see that from that far out. Look at how consistent those frames were the entire time. So we didn't have that weird dip that we had in parts one and two at about 10%, 20% of the way in. Average FPS, 78.4, pretty much across the board. Not really much else to say other than that's it's a great score. Wow, I'm getting sniped by somebody right where I spawned. Ah, oh, wow, I am not good at this game. I'm back in saddle again. Dog, so sick of these kids camping, man. What's up with that? Yeah, see, he was coming to camp again. He was coming to camp. Uh, by the way, something I should point out here, CPU usage, pretty much pegged at 100% this entire time. So uh, something to take note of, I recommend a quad core processor at least for Battlefield 1. Ha! Huh. Uh, I killed one of them. That was worth it. All right, let's uh, see what we scored here. 101 average FPS up top there. Not bad at all. So here are the official benchmarks for each game. Starting off with GTA 5, we see a very sharp increase in frame rates coming from a single hyper-threaded core, but not enough to pull us into four core territory. It is worth noting that our minimum frame rate did substantially improve, indicating a much more consistent and fluid experience overall with three physical cores. City Skylines mirrors much of what we see in GTA, noticeable improvements across the board, but especially in the case of the minimum. A jump from 13 to 24 is substantial, and it's, I mean, it's basically the difference between unplayable and bearable, your results may vary. In Ashes of the Singularity, however, something strange happened. The three-core simulation yielded higher frame rates across the board and in the averages you're seeing here. While I wouldn't say 2FPS is a big deal under normal circumstances, in games like these relying on fewer, more powerful cores, Power, powerful cores, overclocking even higher would likely result in an even larger gap. Keep in mind it is easier to overclock fewer cores. On our simple first person shooter, CSGO ran with flying colors. Surprise, surprise. We still aren't up to par with true quad cores in this one, surprisingly, but 212 FPS and even 176 on the minimum should yield a very smooth and enjoyable experience even on a high refresh rate monitor. Total War Warhammer, piece of cake. We saw very stable and consistent frame rates and even a slight lead when it came to the minimum FPS. Notice the huge jump too from one to three cores, and also how hyper-threading really didn't make much of a difference in that scenario. Lastly, the Battlefield 1 beta. These benchmarks aren't 100% consistent, I use the same map and same weapons, but I can't guarantee 100% repetition, obviously that's not going to happen. However, I did not notice any difference in gameplay between a full-fledged i7-6700K and this three-core simulation, keep in mind with hyper-threading disabled. The benchmarks reinforce this claim, average frame rates actually passed that of my i7, and the minimum stayed within a respectable 5 frames of the top tier. The difference between 1 and 3 cores in this scenario is actually quite staggering. Do keep in mind, however, that most of the games we tested here had CPU usage pegged at or near 100% for all three physical cores. So while a few games appear to benefit from the reduced core count on paper, four cores is still the way to go in terms of future proofness, not a word, but just get over it, and multitasking. I must say, I've been enjoying this experiment lately. If you have any ideas for part four, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe like a dual core, dual core hyper thread. Even though I've done that with the Pentium G4400 and other CPUs in that category, I'm just, I don't know if you guys wanted to see the same thing done over again with the only difference being L3 cache and a small frequency change. But we can do that if you want in part four. Something else that you wanna see in part four, we can do that as well. Um, if you have any suggestions for future experiments, like different series altogether, uh, we can definitely make those things happen as long as it's affordable and within the realm of possibilities here in the studio. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. If you do feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for part four of this series and my first, uh, well, non-introduction blog 
vlog. Is it a blog? It's a vlog if it's on video, I guess. Yeah, it's a vlog uh, of my Apple experience. So I've been sporting the new MacBook 2016, the iPhone SE, and the Apple Sport Watch. I must say at this point, I am huge fans of all of them. Surprise, surprise, but more on that in the vlog. Stay tuned for that. This is Science Studio. Thanks for the 100K, folks. Stick around. Good stuff on the way. Thanks for learning with us.